For nearly two decades, the world was shocked by a sudden infertility crisis. Women everywhere were unable to have children. This crisis continued until the year 2027, when finally, something miraculous happened. The world is in chaos. Society and civilization have fallen apart, except in Britain. Britain is the last civilized place left, making it a prime destination for migrants. As a result, it's turned into a police state to handle the influx of immigrants who end up in refugee camps. Theo Ferran, a low-level government worker and former activist, is approached by the Fishers, a group labeled as terrorists. The group is led by his ex-wife, Julian Taylor, whom he hasn't seen in almost 20 years since their son Dylan died during the 2008 flu pandemic. Julian claims that the Fishers now gain support through peaceful means and wants Theo to use his connections to get transit papers for a young immigrant woman named Key, who needs to get to the coast. At first, Theo is hesitant because it sounds complicated, but he agrees when he learns that Key is pregnant, the first woman to be pregnant in 18 years. As Theo and Key make their way on this dangerous journey, Theo learns more about what's really happening. He discovers why Key needs to get to the coast, that no one is sure if their destination even exists, and that their lives are in more danger than he initially thought. Theo's mission quickly becomes to protect Key at all costs to ensure the survival of humanity. The film is packed with details and tackles a lot of political and social issues like immigration, xenophobia, authoritarianism, societal collapse, environmental degradation, and economic disparity. Britain has become a fortress, harshly cracking down on immigration. Refugees and asylum seekers are kept in terrible detention camps. The government controls its citizens through propaganda and military force, and the country is plagued by violence, lawlessness, and despair. The environment is in bad shape, and there's a huge gap between the rich, who live comfortably, and the poor, who suffer in slums. But despite all this, the film shows that people can still have hope, be resilient, and show compassion even in the toughest times. So the movie, uh, it gets really intense, especially towards the climax. The suspense is just layer upon layer of tension, keeping you on the edge of your seat the whole time. The final scene is one of the examples like how the journey was incredibly stressful to watch. One of the standout features of this movie is the cinematography. Director Alfonso Cuarón uses long text and continuous shots along with handheld camera work, which gives the film a gritty, realistic feel. Techniques create a sense of real-time urgency and immersion, allowing the audience to feel as though they are part of the action, thereby heightening the emotional impact and tension. Furthermore, Cliff Owen does a solid job as Theo Ferran, though his performance is fairly average. Uh, Clay Hope Ashiti Eski also does a good job. There are familiar faces like Julian Moore, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and Michael Caine, who are also excellent as always, but the performances are pretty much average as well, like the others. In the end, this film tells a gripping story set in a dystopian feature, filled with important social and political messages. The intense suspense combined with innovative filming techniques makes it an uncomfortable experience. Dio and Kiss journey highlights themes of hope and perseverance, showing the strength of the human spirit even in the dark times. This movie is not just entertaining but also thought-provoking, making it a significant piece of cinema.